they know it's right and maybe they feel guilty about it mm. and they they are not ready to change because they know that if they admit it's real and good and important that they have to also change that's maybe one reason another reason is it's again it's hard like my brother said for a kid to tell a parent what to do right automatically you're like mm -hmm. at a, right. yeah. even if, even if the kid is right you know it just you still have a certain right you know, hold by hierarchy yourself. of like how things should right. and not only that but it's also you're putting restrictions you know obviously just by nature people don't like restrictions they don't like like i want to do i want to do welcome back to another episode of inspiration for the nation and this is an interview i've been trying to to get to do for as long as I've been doing interviews. I get to sit down with the Colt Yaakov brothers. If I told you that two boys that went to public school would be responsible for the most amount of Torah learning today, I don't think you would have believed me, but that is the case. In this episode, you'll hear about how they broke through every barrier and challenge possible in order to get to where they did today and have one of the strongest and most impactful Torah or even Jewish websites, platforms in the planet. And they are just getting started. They talk to me about their really incredible uh, initiatives coming up and just other tools and, and just they're living in 2030 while we're we're all, all living in the Stone Ages. So go ahead and enjoy this episode. It is in memory of Yishem Edav ben Yaakov Shleima, as well as Miriam Sura, Bas Yaakov Moshe. You will hear about some of my favorite books that you need to read, as well as the a crazy, impactful, uh, really useful podcast that you should all be listening to. Now, here's my conversation with the Cole Yaakov brothers. I'm Yaakov Langer, and you're listening to Inspiration for the Nation. Here we are with the Cole Yaakov brothers, Mr. Shimon and Mr. Ruvain. Not Rabbi, because I saw on you were on Inside Art Scroll, um, and it said Mr. It's, is that specific, that like you're not rabbis? Yeah, we're definitely misters. You're misters. Yeah, yes. we're, we're the ones who record the rabbis. Interesting. Most yeah. of them. I, who would have thought that two misters would be responsible maybe for like the most Torah learning ever? Like if you asked me before I came down to earth, it's like, who's going to be responsible for it? I'd be like, I don't know, rabbi. Like, oh, you're already wrong. Misters. Okay, so I want to talk about Torah in time and just the impact that it has and just the tons of facets that you that Torah in time has. But I guess take me back to a little to the beginning of where you're from and how this all came about. Right. First of all, thank you so much for having us. Sure. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, for sure, yes. We've really heard a lot about it. And thank Baruch you. Hashem, you've just talks have been skyrocketing and it's really an honor to be here. Thank you. Baruch Hashem. Thank yeah. you. Great. Congratulations on the 100,000 uh, subscribers. That's I appreciate awesome. that. That's really thank cool. You. Um, yeah, so how it all started. I mean, um, just in a nutshell, because you know, not too long ago, Art Scroll did interview us, and we went in depth with that. Sure. Uh, and we, we were told it was a very inspiring story. But um, we're uh, we're from the Bukharian community, uh, from Queens. I live in Muncie now. He's still in Queens, and uh, we immigrated to this country when I was two years old in 1979. And uh, we d we didn't really know much about Judaism. We knew we were Jewish, but that's where pretty much it ended. We knew concepts of uh, like Shabbat and kosher, but really we didn't... Like traditional. Very traditional. Traditional stuff, right. right. But uh, really And what, what was your original language that you spoke? Uh, so we speak Russian because uh, Uzbekistan, which is the country we were from, I'm mm. from a city called Tashkent. Former Soviet Union. Right. It was part mm. of the Soviet Union. So that's what they spoke. They spoke Russian. So, Duh. Uh, <laughs> I, that's, that's my extent of Russian. And my brother actually knows Russian. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So we came here and it was still during communism. So we just had this o o open a window of opportunity to run out. And there weren't too many people leaving at the time. And we were one of them. And we came over here. And uh, like any other uh, not observant family, I, we went to public school. And that's how we grew up. Yeah, parents didn't really know better. I mean, there was some people that came with us, but there was the public school was like the scene. You know, there, there wasn't so many yeshivas around and um, not too many kids going on there. And it wasn't really a place to be at the time. There were a few yeshivas here and there that were kind of grabbing kids, but you know it didn't hit us yet at the moment. Right. I've been also I've been I'm sure back then and now it was like public school is it's free, you know, right. and you could educate your children about 
Jewish traditions in your home. It's not like really so crazy for someone who doesn't really know much about the Torah life. So, so okay, so I watched the Inside Art School uh, interview and I, I highly recommend anyone to go check that out. So you you mentioned there that what shifted your trajectory was was Queen's Gem? JEP, Jep uh, Jewish Jep, Education Jep. Program. Yeah, um, so in third grade, um, the rabbis from JEP got in contact with the school, found out who the Jewish kids are, contacted their parents, and my parents are one of the parents that contacted. And next thing I know, it, uh, they're, my parents are asking me, would you like to be pulled out of uh, school one hour early once a week? What kid is going to say no to that? <laughs> you know. So uh, I'm like, yeah, boom, sign me up. So uh, I went. I went to those, and I remember feeling that it was. This was like so incredible, so amazing uh, that I was really, really enjoying it to the point where that hour from two to three on Wednesday afternoon felt like it was like five minutes. And uh, do you remember like what they were mm -hmm. teaching? Yeah, basic stuff, holidays, and just very, very basic stuff for people who didn't know about anything. Just I remember, cool. like, do you know who the first Jewish person was? Like they would ask me these questions and, <clears throat> you know, I knew, <clears throat> I knew, I guess the most, I guess we could say the most well-known, you know, Moses, you know, was it Moses? Right. So, <laughs> you know, you get a lot of background and just that question actually that my parents asked my brother, would you like to be pulled out once a week to learn? If you actually think about what led up to that, you know, what Hashgacha had to actually happen. Because if you think about it, that was actually the turning point of our entire family. And I guess you could say the entire world which Baruch Shem, we were zochet to be a part of this whole revolution. But it was that question that my that my mom asked Shimon. And then he said, yes. And that was really just the beginning of like a whole journey. So it's like, it was just mi mind blowing. And know? after about a year and, and, and a half of that, in the middle of the fourth grade in December time, um, they finally convinced my parents to, to send me to a, a yeshiva, get out of public school. And it was a Kiruv Yeshiva called Yeshiva uh, Pri uh, Institute Yeshiva. at the time. Now it's called Yeshiva Primary. It still exists. Rabbi Zalman Deutscher, 53rd mm -hmm. year. Amazing. And uh, I went there for a few years. And it was a special Yeshiva designed for kids coming out of public school. And uh, it was a great time. We had a blast. And I, I learned a lot. A lot of seeds were planted. Did you ever feel at any point, like, I guess, intimidated to, I guess, learn more? Because, I mean, just how... Typically, it is with learning, like the more you learn, you realize how much you don't know. But it could be when you're coming from a you know non-religious background and you're learning more and learning more, like you maybe sometimes feel like an outsider, like uh, and I, I see everyone who, who knows so much more than me and it's maybe not the the right thought, but it, I could see someone being like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's too much. Not at that age. Mm -hmm. And not really, you know, you're not thinking that mature yet. Uh, we're just having fun and just with people who are similar to me, like Jewish kids, you know, mm -hmm. a little different in public school. You had all types of kids over there. Right. So I just felt very at home. It wasn't focused too much on the observance. It's not like when I was going to yeshiva, even those years. It was, uh, I still, we, we really weren't holding at home yet. But I was just really liking it, you know, even though it was like two hours extra compared to public school. Hmm. It didn't bother me, you know, just uh, it was good times. It was like minded individuals, it's kind of a smaller niche, you know, people, same background, you know, also maybe some came from, you know, uh, international, former Soviet Union, stuff like that. So, you know, it kind of felt more at home. So did, did your <clears throat> parents have any opposition as you were becoming? So uh, naturally, I was bringing some of the Judaism or observance into the home. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, my parents weren't really like cool with that, you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, Baruch Hashem, just in case I don't get to it, and, and they, Baruch Hashem, now my parents are totally from, and my mother is reading to Hillam, uh, and my dad is in shul all day and learning. It's an amazing ending. Wow. Yeah, it's a great ending. I just want to make sure uh, to, Don't to say anytime. that. But they, at, they, they use Torah anytime yeah, all the time. Right, but, sure. but at that time, they really didn't appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Because they don't understand it, right? You know, and they don't value it. Because they... plus, you have a kid who's like ten years old, fifteen years old, telling you what to do. Like, <laughs> who, who are you? What's going? Who's the yeah, parent here? Right, right. That's a good point. Right. <laughs> so, like, are you telling me what to do? So that's a tough thing. Um, so it was tough, and that was actually one of the reasons that they made sure my brother didn't go to yeshiva. To like, okay, we don't want two, <laughs> we don't want two of these situations over right. here. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm forever thankful for him for setting up the road for me to never actually be a day in yeshiva, which, which was actually the case. But there was a good trade-off because he actually was my yeshiva, you know, him personally. So. I, you know, I think there's a silver lining of you not growing up observant because, and maybe you probably hear it so much now, but like, if you're in yeshiva, you would hear both of you Ruvain Shimon jokes all the time. Like you're the the staple example when That's people true. go, for example, okay, in a different order. So you're at least like <laughs> relieves it's Shimon Ruvain, right. but Maybe uh, maybe that's like one of the several lines. Yeah, many right? of the rabbis who uh, usually we listen to when we're live in front of them, they usually change their names. You know, uh, <laughs> especially, especially if they're bad examples of right. one issue. <laughs> if one kills the other, <laughs> right. that's, that's, right. that's a good yeah. example. So, was there a, a, a moment where you had this clear vision for Torah anytime and what it is, or it just slowly developed into what it is today? Well, after. Um, I finished this yeshiva institute, which was, I believe, eighth grade. Uh, things didn't go in a good direction. Where we decided, a lot of the people in that class decided to go to public school, which was, uh, I don't know what we were thinking, but uh, that's just, I guess, we, I don't know exactly, really. But we, we did that, and Rabbi Deutscher, uh, he tried everything possible for us not to do that. He begged us, he called us, he, he, he came to our house. But we ended up doing that. And I went to Forest Hills High School, um, and it was interesting because I was already becoming a teenager, I was already maturing, whatever it is, and and this was already the early 90s, and that was a time where the Soviet Union collapsed, and it was a mass immigration of people leaving and coming to, to the States, and Queens, where we're, we're from, became populated by these Buharian Jews who just got off the boat, and they were going to the school, and they were looking at me like, you're Bukharian? I'm like, yeah because I've been here already for a while, you know, and they really like started to like look up to me and, and, and they also weren't holding anywhere. They didn't know anything. They knew were Jewish, but you know, I've been there, done that. You know, I felt I was thinking to myself with them. So, so he, he was a perfect example to relate to these kids because he was exactly where they were like 10 years right. ago or something. Right. Just yeah, like they heard about track. the Air Jordans. You know, I was wearing all my Air Jordan stuff and all the cool clothes, whatever it is. <laughs> and they were, they're like, "Wow, this, this guy is cool. He's he's one of us. So he's pretty cool." <laughs> I want to be so like I him. So I got a lot of respect from from <laughs> them. And I don't know, just this 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 feeling came over me that I got to start sharing some of the stuff I learned from this yeshiva. I was there for like four years, from fourth to eighth grade. And I, I don't know what possessed me. Maybe it's just something that is I don't know the way Hashem, you know, whatever. Just I started doing Kirov with them, even though I, I, I myself weren't really, really holding, but I just knew a lot of this information I learned. And um, it was great. I was just doing a lot of Kirov and, and one thing led to another. And I, and I myself was trying to grow. And at the time, they were, um, Kirov was being done with me also by rabbis. They stopped me in the street. You want to come for a lecture? I'm like, absolutely. Come for a lecture. Would you like to come next week? Absolutely. And I was enjoying it as well. And I was listening to these rabbis. And I was coming week after week after week. And it was literally beginning to change my life. And all those seeds that were planted by Rabbi Zalman Deutscher in Yeshiva Institute were really beginning to blossom. Uh, that it was affecting me personally now in a serious way. And all these people around me, especially my brother. He was my number one uh, Kira project. I was his test subject. <laughs> First one. Baruch Hashem. It worked out. I opened the door for all the other. Uh, Baruch Hashem. <laughs> well, he owed it to you. He took you away from Yeshiva. Oh, the least he okay. could do is to help you. you That's know, true. Front. That's true. Right. And then challenges started to happen at home because I was becoming more observant. And again, as I was getting older, now it was I, resistance. Uh, resistance at home. Why do you think that? I mean, I'm asking in your personal, uh, you know, story, and then also just in general when you have children that are becoming more observant than their parents? Like, why is it that friction? What do you think? Maybe they feel they know it's right and maybe they feel guilty about it mm. and they, they are not ready to change because they know that if they admit it's real and good and important that they have to also change. That's maybe one reason. Another reason is, it's again, it's hard. Like my brother said, for a kid to tell a parent what to do, right. automatically you're like... Mm -hmm. at a, right. even, if, even if the kid is right, you know, it just... You still have a certain right, you hold by yourself. Right, hierarchy of like how things should happen. Right. And not only that, but it's also you're putting restrictions. You know, obviously, just by nature, people don't like restrictions. They don't like, like, I want to do, I want to do. You know right. what I'm saying? If you tell me now what I can't do, then all of a sudden, like, what do you mean I can't do this? Then I have less freedom. Know, so it's very inconvenient. Right. If so, if so people look at it that way. 
You know, if they actually look at it with the right lenses and they realize how beautiful it is. Do you think your parents particularly, like from leaving Russia and leaving that like dominance that like now their kids are telling them what this, like just some component or not necessarily? I wouldn't think so. No. Again, I think because it was so anti back in, in the communist countries that they just like, even though their parents or grandparents, and it, it, it was a thing, like they they knew that their grandparents were religious. Right. But just the way they grew up. It got ingrained. You know, that, it's that like, religion's they're just, yeah, just uh, you know, they, I'm, I'm not interested. You know mm. what I mean? Like, I don't want to change. You know. It's right. not that important. But, um, but yeah, so we started to keep Shabbos together. We had a whole group of guys who are in similar situations where parents are working on Shabbos and they wanted to keep Shabbos. So we, a bunch of teenagers got together. I was like their leader or whatever it is, and I went on for a while. And as as this is all going on, I'm listening to more lectures, more lectures, you know, and, and Beit Gavriel at the Bukharian community over there. Uh, a lot was going on at the time, in the early 2000s, uh, even late 90s. And uh, it got to the point where it had such an impact, these lectures, I said, let me just start recording this. And it started with audio. What year is this around? Um, 2000. To, probably 2000 because I got my camera in 2001 my first camera my parents gave me as a wedding gift do you still have it yeah I actually do you <laughs> should totally like put that in your office in a case if it's not already <laughs> right no right. it's like iconic it's really cool yeah yeah, yeah. so and I see also also all the tapes the mini DV tapes I have like boxes of them wow. all, like, labeled with all you know different lectures uh, and then I started recording the the videos and I was making copies people were asking me for them and the idea of the internet came up more and more. I just didn't know anything about it. I wanted to do it, just didn't know anything YouTube about it. YouTube wasn't out yet. That right. opened in 05. Right. So before then, it was like a place to go online to watch something. It wasn't really did, so did hard of. Did the internet have the like negative from like in yeshivas? Did it have it like negative connotation yet? Or was it pre that even? We wouldn't know. We weren't living right. in the no, yeshiva okay, world yet. Right. <laughs> right. Or yeah, we're... You know, there was so. no, there was no social media, right? Even you know, Google. Was just, that was just email, really. It was at the know? point that people were like scared, like, "Oh, don't talk to strangers online because they could be dangerous." Mm. I remember I, I AOL chat that. groups. Yeah, chat I remember groups. AOL was very big, right? Stuff like that. So started recording, and my and and at, at some point, my brother was like observing everything that's happening, and and he already learned as much as he could about Judaism for me. You know, I exhausted and, all his information, <laughs> and he's like, "I want more. I want more." You know, so yeah, so Baruch Hashem, and uh, I started I was, looking on the internet. <clears throat> I was searching online. I, really? I I started working. My brother had a, a computer repair shop. I was I was working there. I was gaining some experience for a few years, and then um, in 2005, the beginning of the year, that's when YouTube opened up. So in mid 2005, I switched over from the computer repair shop to Turo College. I worked in the IT department, and. Um, when I was there, I was just, you know, looking online in September and October, looking for some lectures here and there. They had H Audio, which is, you know, still around. Um, and uh, it was just audio, though. And I'm looking for some video sites, and I maybe just found one, which was very outdated. And it was like, come on, there's nothing online with videos. 613.org, maybe? Something like that? 613.org. And <clears> quality was not so whatever. It was just like, okay, so this is what I'm up against, you know. So... Um, and I'm asking the different departments there who can help me out with some coding here. And I took a course, you know, with some coding or whatever it is for websites and, and HTML, basic, basic stuff. And uh, I'm like, you know, Shimon has like a nice amount of videos, like maybe 50 videos, you know. I'm like, okay, so that's, we got some content. When you say, meaning over you, the years, over the years. Not from you, it's from different No, Rabbanim. no, the ones that, yeah. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah different yeah, Rabbanim. Yeah, we, don't, we, don't, we don't give shit. Right, okay. <laughs> right, right, right. No, he was recording over the years. Got it, got it. So over the years, he had, he, he had like, saw, he saw the concept of what I was doing right. and everything. And he's mm. like, and we, we, the idea of the internet was that he was thrown around, but no one was stepping up to the plate. And that's really, really a big part of this. My brother came along and just really made that happen. So, website. so Baruch Shem, it was amazing shidduch, you know. Uh, you know, Shimon has just such amazing management skills and making sure things are recorded and operations and all that stuff. I'm more of the techie guy behind the scenes mm -hmm. to make sure things are, you know, even now, actually, what is it, 17 years later, 18 years later, um, he's still like the front guy, you know, the operations and talking to people and this and that. Uh, I'm also managing the whole tech team and the whole whatever department. That's so cool. So yeah, it's it's really it's like we always just kept upgrading ourselves to just the next versions of ourselves and just being responsible for more things. And uh, the growth has been unbelievable. 
Uh, and then at the end of 2005, beginning of 2006, I got something online, super basic site, like super basic, didn't even have video, it was just regular audio. And in Bikitsa in 2006, uh, March time is when uh, we officially launched uh, the website uh, with some video. I think it was just downloadable at the time, maybe even it wasn't even streamable. Uh, and um, and that's it. Like we had some, just maybe a few dozen lectures, you know, and and we barely said anything to anybody. Right. Really, you, you weren't marketing you know, it. At there that was point. nothing really just, to market. Like it was just there. Told the local <laughs> shul maybe where we were. Well, what was your like, intent? Your intent was for like your friends and family to to put it up and to allow people who couldn't make it to the lecture mm -hmm. to, to experience because pe people would ask you know like it started with tapes started right, with DVD, right. uh, cds and then dvds and, and then it just becomes a lot easier when you put it in one place right and people can view it right we're just get, thinking how do we get it to yeah. the masses like right. how do we get to spread this at a wholesale level so and that that was the the, the answer which the right now in 2022 seems like so obvious but right. back then it was not obvious at all it was right. it was even so far even youtube had a limit i think the limit was 10 minutes on a video that you can upload at so that time, wasn't right. really an option right to upload so it was like we kind of dominated the whole online jewish torah kind of world with videos and then later youtube came out with whatever whatever it is uh, they upgraded to much longer Right. Uh, but at the time, there was really there was really nothing there, and then it's a good thing because if YouTube was was longer, you might have just gone and put stuff on YouTube. Uh, maybe I mean honestly, it, I, I guess with any new thing that comes out, sometimes it takes a while for people to kind of just get used to the information of it, and and you know just to get used to using something like that. Right, right. Uh, so again, like it was it was fifty hits in March in our site. Two thousand six. In two thousand six. And then 150 in, in next month, and then 250, and then 1,000, and then 2,000, 2,500, 5,000, and then it just kept skyrocketing. At what point did you realize, like, okay, there's really something special here? Because in the beginning, I'm sure you were like, oh, cool, like, you know, 10 hits, even 1,000 hits. <laughs> right. But, like, at a certain point, you were probably like, whoa, what's, this is actually bigger than we... When the numbers maybe. started to get up there, we were just like, is this some type of a mistake or something? Because And then we started to see where the numbers are coming from, the IP addresses. We okay. saw it was like coming from, you know, from the West Coast and from Israel and from Canada and the UK. It was like, whoa, this thing is really growing. It's getting out there. And then and then the rabbis who were there began to, to telling us that they're getting feedback from people. Um, phone calls, you know. And that gave us so much like chizuk, like I mean, inspiration. It was like, wow, this is this is something real, something going on here. And, and really, just a note on that, the speakers are really what make it what it is. Because obviously, without the speakers, there's nothing. And it's so special to partner with so much, so many amazing speakers and have such amazing you have the best. You have the best Torah you know? teachers out there. Yeah, it's amazing relationships that we have with these speakers. And we, we, we understand what kind of an amazing synergy it is that with, you know, one plus one doesn't equal two. You know what I mean? It equals 11. So it's and that's how that's how much further we can go. And Baruch Hashem, we were able to help them become, let's say, more well known, or the people would be able to call them to go on tours around the world and to speak and to call them out and to go to Shabbatones. And and we feel so happy that we're able to, you know, help speakers uh, like amplify their talents and because they're so talented. You know what I mean? And and the world has to hear what they have to say. And it's just it's really amazing. You have speakers really in every niche and every topic under the sun. You know, with Torah anytime, and it's just been a it's just been a bracha. Now, Shimon is more you know because he's out there. He speaks to many of the speakers, and he sees you know how much akaras to tov they have, and and he speaks to them all the time. So it's really it's really special to partner with these. When speakers. I started <clears throat> podcasting, I was very very scared that me personally, like Rabbi Center, he was my yeshiva, he still is my yeshiva. Him and like other people call me like, "What are you doing?" Like, because <laughs> like going online and interviewing people like. When I started, it wasn't like the, I guess, the average or the norm, but I'm like, you know, I did Cheshben and I, 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 did, I did speak to them and everyone and like, in the, and I thought I'd get backlash because whatever. In the end, Baruch Hashem, like the amount of negative feedback that I got was like not even 1%. Baruch Hashem. Right. Were Baruch you, Hashem. did you, were you ever concerned as you were growing and or did you get pushback? Because in my head, I, I see your site as the first site to really <clears throat> showcase how the internet could be used in a very, very incredible, like the way it's meant to be used. Right. One of our taglines um, when we started, we still use it sometimes now, <laughs> is uh, God's reason for the internet. Mm -hmm. And we got some slack for that for some people. I'm like, who are you to say what God's <laughs> reasons are? I'm like, hey, relax. It's just, uh, don't it's take it so seriously. Thing, right? It's a cute yeah. little thing. It's 
you know, because end of the day, though, you know, everything that's created by God, you know, you could use it in two ways. So here, here we're using it in a very good way. Internet, it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere, and and it's getting worse in terms of the time wasting and the social media and and the people, you know, just becoming addicted to different things. So we figure, let's fight fire with fire. So the more services we have. The more reasons we have someone to use one of our services, one every minute they're on tour anytime is one less minute they're you know who knows where doing who right, knows what. Right, right. So, mm-hmm. you know, just to ignore it is it, not going to work. It's it's here to stay. So you fight fire with fire. That's that's how we would look at it. We obviously don't encourage people to bring this something new into their life like the internet or smartphones if they don't have it. Right. right. Which is again why we have the phone system. Right. So, so we'll we'll speak about, yeah, they don't have the internet right. and right. boom, they're connected to. Right. We want to make sure, I mean, I don't know if it's a good line or not, but after 120, they have no excuses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you, right. you have nothing. We'll, we'll yeah. speak about the different so, ways uh, well, sure. of, that we spread Torah. But so, yeah, the years went on. Torah time was growing and growing and growing. And we really had no idea it's going to get as big. And the biggest thing is that we thank Hashem so tremendously is that he brought us an incredible team together. Mm. Uh, after two years after we started, um, we met Yosef Davis, who became, who now became our executive director, Baruch Hashem. In 2007, right? In 2007. Um, he started off as our first volunteer. Then came along Mayor Summers, who became our operation manager. Then Moshe Sofer came, who was a tremendous help at time in so many different ways, especially the hotline. Um, and then you have Rachim Segev and, and David Pine and... Uh, and well, some of our volunteers, There's many people all over the world. Again, because it's a global organization, you could be anywhere in the world and and, and help us and volunteer and work for us and whatever it is. And we always need right. more because there's always a lot more to spread. So, right. so t- break it down for someone who doesn't know a lot about technology. They just go on tour anytime and they're like, "Oh, great, there's a share here." But like, someone just videoed it and uploaded it. That's, I think, the typical thought process. But there's there's a lot more behind it. Take us through that. Yeah, many people think that Torah in Time is just a website. They right. don't realize that we actually run many different departments and we spread Torah in many different ways. Just to give an example, um, in um, in 2012, we, we finally launched our, the new app, the first version of the app, because mm-hmm. apps were becoming very popular. And we went through a lot of challenges to, to get to that point. You know, we tried different developers and, you know, and a lot of, we were going we, through. We actually started in 2012 and it took us such a long time to actually get to a finished product. So we actually finished it in 2014 to actually launch the app, you know, and, right. and that was a time when um, apps were kind of getting more popular. And again, like oh, a new a new way to spread it. We have to jump on the bandwagon. Right. Technology just keeps evolving and evolving. Right. And Baruch Hashem, so we, part, we partnered with uh, Chesky Koftal from Mishkan Yecheskel, and he was a big help in terms of direction at the time. And that, and that was a, a tremendous help. Um, and, and then something that started to happen is that a lot of these um, organizations have conventions, as we know. The Good Convention is actually coming up this week. Mm-hmm. I don't know when anyone's going to watch this, but... Um, Project Inspire and Aish and uh, and Shabbos Kerav Tuni and many of these organizations have conventions and we started to partner with them and go to these conventions with our entire team right. to start recording these conventions because we're happy, we're getting content because that's what we want. They're happy, they're getting their lectures out not just to the people who are at the convention but to the entire world. Everyone, right. Uh, and it was a, just a great connection and now we do... I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 conventions a year. Wow. Right now is our yeah. busy season. We're, we bring them, we're the go-to. We're the go-to for conventions. Yeah. Is, is, I didn't even know that there was, is there another? Is there a <laughs> competition here? Like, uh, um, I mean, this whole concept, I guess, where it just you know, evolved into streaming. It. Like, right. you know, there's literally tens of thousands of people who watch conventions online live, like the Aguda convention was just coming up. And there's a lot of preparation for that. So people don't realize that that itself is a whole department of people that have to run it. Right. Yeah, live streaming is not it, simple at all. And who's recording when and how and the equipment and make sure everything is working. And the live stream, make sure everything is right. And sometimes there's seven... <laughs> sessions going on at the same time right so we need seven camera guys at the same time live streaming to seven different outputs on the website and you can access everything after a convention you can have 60 classes new classes from that convention in just a three four day period so just to scramble to make sure there's the quality audio quality video quality live stream no downtime obviously it takes years to be able to perfect it and, and baruch hashem over the years with siyata dishmaya we've really been become the go-to to know that you know it's safe and obviously with Hashem's help everything is going to be uh, optimized you know to view and to listen to. So. About three and a half years ago, we we uh, started uh, working on a brand new website and brand new app with a company called Bitbean in Lakewood. Mm-hmm. Amazing, amazing company. Highly recommended. 
and um, and we invested close to a million dollars because this is going to be something that doesn't exist in the world. You know, we had features that you know we we, we thought of that are really going to enhance the users uh, how they use it. And Baruch Hashem, about a year ago, the app was finally finished, ready for launch. It wasn't finished with all the features we wanted, but it was finished enough to be phase much better one, than the right. old, right? Phase right. one. And and to this day, a year mm-hmm. later, we have we're pushing close to, uh, to close to eighty thousand <coughs> downloads. Almost eighty thousand downloads. Wow. Close yeah. to eighty thousand downloads, and and how many? Five I think stars? over seven thousand five stars. Over seven thousand five stars, which is sometimes, I mean, in the Jewish world, it's not so common. It's crazy. Or, it's you know, crazy. I mean, and and this is just the beginning. And the new website, which is. Uh, which is not out yet because we're just so much to do that's probably a few months away and that's going to be a huge game changer as well because we 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 analyzed all these other major websites uh like uh, youtube and and netflix and all their features we added many more features to it and that's where we're making the ultimate experience for people right because your your website right now in terms of content it's amazing but like quite like I don't know what year it is, but it totally does look dated right. as it is right now. Right, so, right. It's coming know, out. The new for, one's coming I, I, out. I'm the type of guy who I appreciate yeah, those soup. type of things. There's I think a, probably your core demographic is fine regardless, but when something's better, something's just better. It's so true. It's, Some people are like, why are you making a new website? I'm like, oh, wait till you yeah, see you it. Didn't, you you didn't use it, it yeah. Right. It's right. funny. It's like uh, whenever YouTube... They don't do it as much, but whenever they make changes, I was always upset. I'm like, I was happy with the, and then like right. after you use it, I'm like, oh, this is actually way better. Right. Like I didn't even realize what I was missing. Right, so right, yeah, cool. we get that as well. <laughs> um, so, so that, so that's the, the the app came out a year ago. New website coming out soon, and about three and a half years ago, uh, we started the daily dose, which right. has really become like a phenomenon. It's yeah, a lot of these my mother's viral. always sending me like that's you know. nice. And I'll tell you, one of the inspirations to create the daily dose, I remember like. Four, like five years ago, uh, Hidabrut, another great organization, yeah. um, they used to put out these short videos, very professionally made with music, right. and, and they had all footage, these graphics, all stock stuff. footage. And I'm like, hey, this is such a good idea because the attention span of, uh, span of people are getting lower and lower, and less and less. We have so much content and and we have to do this. And it was an idea we had for a while. We just had so many other things going on and we couldn't get to it. And finally, we got to it about three and a half years ago. And now, three and a half years later, we have our Baruch Hashem close to 40,000 subscribers. And there's many different ways to get the Daily Dose. And one of the newest ways is the app, which also became very popular. And you could access all the Daily Doses from the very beginning. So those who don't know, actually, the Daily Dose are short inspirational clips taken from full Torah Anytime lectures. For those, again, who don't have an hour. It's also very good bait for those who want to actually right. watch the lecture afterwards. Right. The Daily Doses are special. We also have Torah Anytime clips on the clip section on the website. But... The daily doses are special because they have that extra oomph, you know, because whatever I don't, we don't feel is like a daily dose. It's still great. We do put it on the Tornay Time site, but that has that special little touch to it. We add some music in the background. We have a nice ending. This one or two line takeaway that somebody could just take whatever they just learned and apply it to their lives. And we've just gotten such amazing feedback from it. People, again, they didn't have much time, two, three, four minutes. They get so inspired. Now they can watch the hour sheer. You know, so it's amazing bait, good bait, that people, and then all of a sudden they follow the speaker, and then they watch all the classes from the beginning, all from a two, three minute clip. So, right. And you know these ending words at the end of these uh, these uh, <coughs> doses? There are people who showed us, they make books from them. They write them down. Wow. Because they, the, the message is like so impactful that they write down these ending words. Uh, Yisrael Ament, who is our musical director, oh, a lot of the music he actually plays depending really? on, on what's being said. Custom yeah, music. A lot of it wow. is custom. Not Never all of it, but a lot of it. I imagine that's actually a thing that you do. Wow. Yeah, right. he's very, very talented, and we're very, very blessed to have him to work with us. But yeah, these these daily doses, uh, with tears in, in people's eyes, we get feedback. We get feedback from people from all over the world how it has literally changed our life. They're they're in a dark situation in life. Things are not going well, and they heard that and that that really, really helped them. And in a few cases, saved people's saved lives. Saved people. Out. There yeah. were people who were ready to jump. You, it, it, <laughs> I mean, I, I was going to wait for them, but once we're here, the, like, what's what's the wildest story that you've heard from how Torah Anytime has impacted someone's life? I'm sure you have a lot. I mean, we 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 got we got messages how people were literally ready to like end their life. That's those are those are extreme. <laughs> those are extreme, right? Um, those are not. I hopefully, mean, they're not common. You know, uh, right. we don't hear too much of that, and hopefully it's not really, you know, so that popular. But um, we, we do hear people who, uh, for example, let's say a loved one just passed away, and they're like in a super dark time in their life, or a loved one is in the hospital right now, and they really need that chizuk, or they just, you know, broke up with somebody, or 
something happened in their life. You know, they got into an argument or they, they didn't speak to somebody for 10 years. All of a sudden they heard a dose, you know, that just snapped somehow, whatever it is. And all of a sudden they called up that person and they apologized or whatever it was. It's like, you hear these things and there's so much more that we don't know. Right. Of, of, of feedback that people are not sharing with us. And, and not only that, but the people, what do you do on WhatsApp? You know, what do you do on social media? You love to share and you share and you share and you share and you have no idea where it's going. We can't track the when they share those right. views. We right. can only track what we send out. <clears throat> Which is by, uh, for me personally is is I don't have that option because I want to be able to track it. Right. I know I sacrifice listens or views from it. But like that's my decision. But I guess your mission is let's just spread Torah. We have as, to get it out there as yeah. much as possible. I'll read you just one or two testimonials that yeah, we please. have. I replaced uh, watching Netflix and YouTube with amazing Torah lectures from Torah Anytime. Thank you so much. Um, during the dark and lonely days of the pandemic, while we were in full lockdown, Torah Anytime was a shining light in our family and stayed us and helped us stay sane. Wow. You know, like we get these type of messages. We have like endless amount of these testimonials. Thousands. We'll be right back this week's episode. But first. I'm going to speak from some of my notes I have, and then I'll speak from my heart. This episode is brought to you by Mechon Rev Hoffman. Rev Shlomo Hoffman Zatzal was one of the Chachmei Hadar, which means wise men of the last generation, in understanding Koichas Hanefesh, which means the deep understanding of one's inner self and desires. He was a Talmud of Rev Isaac Sher Zatzal and trusted confidant of G'day Yisrael of the last generation, like the Brisker Rav and Rev Shach. That's all. He was trusted by the highest court judges in rehabilitating hardened criminals in the Israeli penitentiary system, showing them how even they had hope for change. I, I, when I read a sentence like that, I'm like, okay, if they have a chance, I, I definitely have a chance. In this svarim, Rav Hoffman teaches how the foundations of modern psychology already exist in the Torah and Chazal, which is something that we always want to see, and he shows it to you. His refreshing approach to discovering and understanding one's kaychas hanafesh, person's desires and challenges, and dealing with them according to the Torah has literally changed many people's lives. The safer of his teaching, Secrets of the Soul, has sold over 30,000 copies, that's right, 30,000 copies between the Hebrew and English versions, and the English volume on Shadechem Shalom Bias is eagerly anticipated later this year, and I am so pumped to read that in English. This unique safer is a must for every parent and mechanach, and every individual can benefit Benefit from it tremendously. The Mechon Rav Shlomo Hafen, founded by his Talmud, Rav Meir Simcha Stein, is dedicated to the dissemination of his Torah and unique approach through Svarim, Sherem, and courses for Rabbanim, parents, and educators. Experience the unique approach of Rav Shlomo Hafen and get your copy of Secrets of the Soul today at www.mechonravhafen.com. The link will be in the show notes. And I always say that I don't know where it is. Maybe it's a chazal. It says that Hashem looked into the Torah, used that as a blueprint, and then created the world. And you can navigate through the world, and you're sometimes learning Torah, and you're like, I don't always fully understand how that occurred. Books, svarim like these, are, are it makes it so much easier to understand how we have the Torah, we have the guidance, we have the tools to really navigate life and overcome challenges. If you're alive and you're seeing this or hearing this, I highly recommend you go buy this book. This, I, I, let me just like open it up just so you get a little feel of it. And honestly, I wish more Svarman books were uh, as direct as this book. Coping with anxiety, boom, out of the bat, sold me. Anxiety over sin, coping with sin. Chuva means going in the right direction. Coping with guilt, parents and educators, self-awareness. Uh, identifying with good and evil. Go through this book. I'll let you in on a little secret. I read this book and I'm like, I even felt this book changing my life. And I went ahead, I bought it for two friends and two family members. So you should go ahead and buy this book. Um, there's a Hebrew version of it. There's, like I mentioned, there's a Hebrew version about the Shalom Bias and the English version, I'm so pumped, is coming out. So go ahead and go pick up this book. Help support our advertisers by helping the show now. Back to my conversation with Tor Anytime. On on a personal level, I'm very curious. What what who's your go to person that you watch on Tor Anytime? I'm sure there's a lot. Because right. uh, it started for you. You're like, yeah. I'm into these lectures, I'm watching it and getting right. it. And obviously at this point it's not about you. It's really about what Claudia. Well, at the end of the day, we have to listen to a lot also because we're the ones who find these doses. Right. So mostly Shimon. And Shimon, he actually does listen. 
Not for the sake of listening. <laughs> well, I mean, he I does. It's a he he gets it anyway. <laughs> but he listens because somebody has to go it's through It's a job. It's a job to, at this point. To look at, I mean, it's an amazing job, right? right. Listening <laughs> to Shirovolt or whenever you have time. So you got to listen to the classes in double speed, which he's perfected already. But, but uh, <clears throat> this past month, what's a share or a lecture that you've watched? Um, I listen a lot to... It's uh, our question. I know it's not <clears throat> like... Right. I, lis- I listen to uh, Rabbi Schaefer. He's one of my favorites. A good friend of mine, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Mizrahi, who's like someone new, but but a really, really <laughs> amazing. Um, the Ben Shushan brothers, you know, they're, yeah, they're incredible, they're you know. Um, Rabbi Klasko is a good friend of mine. I listen to him, Rabbi Epstein. I mean, there's so many. Rav Gav is one of my favorites. Yeah. I mean, all, all I, by the way, I have, I, I should have brought it up. I have an email back and forth with, with one, I assume it's one of you or maybe one of your volunteers about getting Rav Gav on tour anytime. Because I was like obsessed with him when I was in Eretz I went to right. Asian. He, the brood actually filmed him and Beyond of Glazer. That's how I know who they are. And I, I'll, I'll find it. I'll show you after. I have so this back, was back, right back in the day? You, you were asking. A while me, ago? Yeah, this is, I, I don't know what year this is. Uh, it's probably, like, I don't remember exactly, like 2013-ish. Oh, okay. Like, it wasn't, wow. you, you, you for sure were big, not as big as you are we now. We didn't have obviously. Rob Gav yet. You did not have him yet. Okay, and there right. was, like, a back and forth, like. We tried, we tried. Baruch Hashem, no, now. No, I'm, like, yeah. yeah, it was. It Maybe was, you have a hand in it, big sauce for you. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 <laughs> if I didn't do anything, you 100% would have him still. I did nothing in there. <laughs> okay. I was just a, a big fan of him. Right, right. So the Daily Dose is doing phenomenal, and uh, I encourage everyone watching, t- if you have a smartphone, get the Daily Dose app. Of course, get the Torah Anytime app as well. The two different apps. I didn't know that. I have the Torah <laughs> Anytime app. I don't have the Daily Dose Get the Dose Daily app. Dose app. And not only that, a lot of people have our old app. Our old app, which is so obsolete and so outdated, it's so, our new app is so different than our old app that it was impossible to upgrade it. So it's not like if you have the old app, you just could hit update and it'll give you the new app. You just have to get it again. Delete the old app. Delete the old app and get the the, the old app is blue icon mm. and the new app is white. So anyone watching this, right? Uh, make sure you have the white, white one. one and make sure you get the daily dose app as well. And also, the, and I'll, for right. anyone listening or watching, have I'll have links in the bottom. Ah, so beautiful, you can easily, beautiful. Uh, Thank you. On it. And there's other ways to get the daily dose. Um, if you don't have WhatsApp for whatever reason, you could just email a uh, daily dose email at toranytime.com and just message your name and add me and you'll get it on email every day instead of WhatsApp because mm. some people don't have WhatsApp. Yeah, there was right. a big, there was a big like, you know, I want to get it, but I don't have WhatsApp. <laughs> so we had to open it up to cater to more people. You know, I'm sure you have people that get the email because like WhatsApp, it's for them, it's maybe too much an email. It's easier, like, right. you know. Oh, they, one place. Yeah, like they, right. it's just an organizational. We thing. even have a hotline for people who don't even want to use device. They just want to dial in to listen to that day's, day, right. that day's dose. So, um, do you know the number uh, The hotline, I believe, is... Um, well, we'll post it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you don't have yeah, to feel we'll bad. It. I have a yeah, hotline. Check. I, 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 personally, <laughs> I personally don't call the hotline. Right. <laughs> right. You know? So check check in the description. You'll see the hotline number. Huh. Also, we have a podcast. Uh, how do yes. people uh, check that out? Uh, yeah. So you can go to any of the podcasts, actually. And type uh, yeah. in Daily Dose. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So you can listen to the podcast. Dose, right? It's on Instagram and Naki Radio as well. So there's many ways of getting that Daily Dose that will literally could change your day because each one of them is absolutely amazing. I'll, um, I'll we'll, we'll we'll insert um, a daily dose here if that's okay. Oh yeah, so sure. We'll get like a feel of what it is. So Baruch Hashem, we do have multiple ways of accessing the daily dose, but there's only one way to access all of them, and right. that is with the daily dose app. You right. can actually access all 1,400 plus doses, which is currently at, at this time of recording. That's how many we have. Um, <clears throat> we also have a concept of a double dose, which is the second dose that we send out on Thursdays which is usually double the time. It's usually like a double the impact also because it's maybe a longer story. Gets you in the mode for Shabbos, you know, a nice story to tell on Shabbos maybe. Yeah, me- usually it's <clears> an <throat> amazing story. People look forward to the double doses because they're just so impactful. So we have eight doses a week usually. Yeah. It's also doses. another hard question. I'll be surprised if you have an actual answer. Do you have a favorite daily dose? Ooh, that is a difficult um, one. <laughs> so Rabbi uh, Yossi Ben Shushan, at one of the good conventions, maybe <laughs> three years ago, he actually shared um, our story. 2019. 2019. He actually yeah. shared our story of how, you know, uh, we started this. Tony Time was and, born. And, and the way he gave it over was like, I was like, inspired listening to it. So that's, uh, I'm, that's pretty biased of me, but that's, okay, I think, but that's, a that's pretty much my, uh, my favorite of those. But just, uh, just moving along, we spoke about the website, we spoke about the app, and we spoke about the Daily Dose. Uh, but a lot of people don't even know that we actually have a hotline. 
where people dial in to, lex- to listen to lectures. And that Highline has been getting over 2 million calls a year. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right. People don't, don't <laughs> you know You need know a, like, a legit like, back-end <laughs> hotline system, no? Like, to um, get we have that many, <clears> very that expensive. Yeah, yeah. Pe- people don't realize that we pay for every phone call on the hotline. We actually pay for every click. Every time someone downloads a shear, watches a shear, listens to an audio, we pay for that. It's not, not, nothing is free. We pay for this massive storage. We pay for the bandwidth to be able to have the thousands of people be on the site at the same time without it crashing. Every little thing you could imagine is paid for. And for the viewers, don't feel bad. Keep using the yeah, site. Keep using, keep using it. Because, and that's where the big donors come in. You know, right, we right, constantly right. need people to back us up because all of our content from the day we started and Bezat Hashem till Mashiach and beyond mm-hmm. is free. And we never want to charge anything. No one, no one ever had to pay to listen to anything. And that's where the big donors come in. You know, mm-hmm. anyone watching this who really wants to, you know, get get a hand in this massive spreading of Torah, uh, please do contact me, Shimon at TorahAnytime.com. And let's just have a conversation to see if we could partner with each other so we can continue to grow. There is so much more to do. And uh, we've mamash just like scratched the surface, you know, and, and, and this is 16 years. And we've just scratched the surface. Yeah, 12 million hours a year of learning, over a million users for the past three years each. Well, hold on, but does that like, does we, that even like get into your head at all? Like, we, we, we didn't even get started yet. No, but I'm saying like, <laughs> like the, the we, impact that you two are having. All these crazy numbers you mean? Yeah, like, is it even fathomable? Like, I can't even imagine what. We, what we try not to think about it. 15 million Jews in the world. And we we have a million users where we need to we need to do better. Although the number yeah. might sound Im- impressive, it also doesn't sound impressive. No, you guys aren't happy. <laughs> no, we want more. We want more. We, want more. we can't stop. We can't. We can't <clears throat> slow down. And and that's why this hotline is we're putting a lot into it because a lot of we want to give people that option uh, to get on in touring time any way they feel comfortable. And Baruch Hashem, we're doing major major upgrades and enhancements on the hotline. Uh, and right now we're averaging over two hundred thousand minutes a day. Of people dialing in, and uh, a lot of uh, enhancements, yeah, thousands that. and thousands of calls. And we also day. have a very talented writer. His name is Elon Perchik, uh, out in LA. And for, the, for like eight years or more, he's been writing for us. And we have a newsletter called the Torah Any Times. So we're actually going through a major rebrand right now. Oh really? Yeah. I've seen I've seen that around in like shuls on yeah. Shabbos. A lot of people print it. It's right. not even us printing it. People oh, really? print it and just put it out there. Uh, and Baruch Hashem, over one hundred twenty thousand subscribers are getting that weekly. Mm-hmm. Right. This beautiful uh, newsletter. And that's doing really well as well. It, so it's pretty much excerpts from Torah Anytime classes. Right. Again, we, have, classes, we have unlimited right. content and we just have, we're finding different ways to get it out there. Funneling people. it in different ways. If people right. don't mm-hmm. know, never heard of Torah Anytime, but all of a sudden they read something and they're like, where's this from? Torah Anytime. Oh, what's that? Boom. We got bait. It's funny because you were not the same, but we have similarities because I also for living the time struggle with. Like, okay, during the week, great. Like, people are consuming the content. When it comes to Shabbos, right. I hope no one's listening to my podcast, and I hope no one's on tour anytime on Shabbos. Right. Well, so then somewhere in the world is not Shabbos. Right, so. right, for sure. But if it's Shabbos for them, right. how are you able to yeah. give them Torah? So that's where Torah anytime comes in. Exactly. It's, like, such a great way to to really, you know, That's get why it's anytime. So right. you can right. print it out, and you can read it over the Shabbos right. table. Right. right. And, and so we have a whole department for the newsletter and our entire department for the hotline, entire department for the daily dose and sending out the daily dose, which takes a lot of work because people, it's not one button. The WhatsApp isn't designed to do what we're doing with it. Oh, by the way, I mean, I should ask this off here, but I can even ask it on here. Like, Baruch Hashem, my, my personal WhatsApp, it's not that big, but my WhatsApp starts slowing down because too many people are asking to see my status. Right. Well, we can talk offline, like how to take it, care of this. It's really tough. Again, we're all and, using WhatsApp now for what it's intended for. Right. right. And they're not they're they they're probably, not cooperating <laughs> no yeah they're, they're like we're not built right. for this we're not built for right. from people learning torah <laughs> and having a hundred thousand people subscribe to your status to see whatever you're putting out okay well we'll talk yeah, we about how, how to like uh you know, show, but as if out. all this wasn't enough already everything we mentioned it just doesn't stop our hashem you know and we have an entire department uh, a new project we started about two years ago called chesed anytime right and this is something that's uh i wasn't sure about in the beginning but we're very excited about it because it's doing really well. And right now, currently, it's a it's a status and um, a WhatsApp it's status. Or, it's a WhatsApp status, and people that need a chesed done, they post. We have a someone who takes care of that. Give me examples of the chesed's that people. Um, ask. We have a chasana tonight, and there's not enough guys to dance. It's a situation oh, like, like could that. Could anyone pay for it? I need yeah. a, I need a package. Can <laughs> okay, anyone pay for it? That's well, a big or I need something right? sent yeah. over, or I need advice on a medical situation. Who knows an expert? Mm-hmm. Or I need a package or a ride. Or I need, I need a phone number for this rub. And or, so, yeah. people seeing the status could could 
Yeah, people who want to do chesed, check. Right. And people who need a chesed, post. Oh, wow. And throughout the week, so many connections are made. Wow. That we came to the conclusion that this is a good idea. And the one who runs it, actually, um, uh, Ben Sion Kamenetsky. Yeah. God bless him. Amazing person. Oh, it's and a lot of work. <laughs> a to be lot on of work. Of him it. and his team. So much. Right. I mean, you know, people are like, him. what do is you guys it, do? You just hit record and you're playing. No, hello. There's a lot of departments Wait, are running this, over this here. Wait, this Ben fellow, is he doing this full time? Yeah. I okay. mean, he's, he's not doing, doing this full time, but like, it's, it's taking up a lot of his time. I imagine this became his life. Yeah. It became his life. We know how it feels. So, what do we want to do, Bezat Hashem, is we want to create a worldwide app. A Chesed Anytime app, where it's going to give people alerts depending on the category of Chesed they're interested in doing. Depending on where they are in the world. Where they are, right, what right. Chesed is being posted. They're going to get custom alerts. And this will really create an incredible thing. Wow. Again, again we're chesed. using WhatsApp, not what it's intended for. Right. I mean, it's like unbelievable how we're just trying to form it into what we need it for. But right. there's so many limitations right. that we can't work That's with. That's why we're going to make this app, the Chesed Anytime well, app. You, you need to, I mean, well, obviously, I think the app is, is just a smarter way to, to have it created but uh rabbi klatsko i had him on the show he he's sure. friendly with a good friend one, yeah. one oh, of the like whatsapp the owner of what or the person who started whatsapp right right so i don't right. know he doesn't that, have too much influence anymore right okay, uh, that guy. okay, okay you guys <laughs> but, uh, try that avenue we try so you try that. okay so chesed anytime yeah so is that like in the works or that's, um we want to start that if anyone listening really wants to like back that up right. that's a huge project and that's really gonna uh, i would imagine <laughs> that's more way more complicated than tour anytime there's like, a lot there's a lot of uh, avenues because each thing is its own world right you have uh, shava saveda a lost object i can't believe with the, um, i mean i would look at it as little amount of people five thousand six thousand people who are subscribed and there are people are posting a lost this lost that and they're being found i, I feel like we're creating a platform for hashem to like you know use for people to find things, like just another way yeah. for people to find things. I'd be surprised if the app comes out and Mashiach doesn't come. <laughs> like that's like it's no, it's like a no-brainer. Like, right, right. You know, one of the pillars of the world, Chesed. And there it is, Torah, yeah. Chesed, right? Gimel Chesedim and Tefillah, right? And, okay. And we're yeah, coming it, out with also. Are tef- you coming out with Tefillah tefillah anytime? Uh, no, but that's much later. Okay. There's a lot of many times. Wait, hold on. <laughs> so how do you? How do you? There's so much opportunity to make an impact right. with digital use in the in the in the world how do you choose which projects to work on because you have to say no let's say to feel anytime i'm assuming right now right. you're not saying no completely but right now you are saying no because you have to focus on whatever it is whatever you're focusing on right now right um you're right it's it's a good question what you're saying and it's really Seattle the Shmaya. it's like what direction things go mm-hmm. the right people come along for a certain project we just keep going with it other things we, we started that kind of just drop because it, it just wasn't, there was new information and it was more difficult than we thought. Because if we don't do something 100%, either we do it 100% or we don't do it. You mm-hmm. know, one of the f- 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 phrases I, I, I heard a few years ago, which I, we, we try to live by is, it's not just about doing the right thing, but it's about doing things right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we don't want to just do it just for the sake of doing it. We want to make sure it's it's done in the the highest professional way where it's the biggest impact, easiest for the users to use it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also <laughs> speak to people. We speak to Rabbanim. We see what what's going on in the world that needs our attention. Like we'll get into, you know, uh, Rebbe Anytime, for example. We didn't know. Like, hey, for people that don't know, explain what Rebbe Anytime um, is. I guess we'll, 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 we'll get there. Yeah, we'll, we'll jump get, into that. But we'll how many more? We have like seven, like <laughs> we have, a little we bit have, of time. We, I, I know, we have a, a few lot, things. But. Yeah, I really want, I just thank you for this opportunity to really to give out to our users <clears> that we're so much more than just a website when right. we started. <clears> right. And there's so many things going on. Just circling back to the Daily Dose book, it became so popular. Uh, I'm sorry, the Daily Dose. It became so popular that we got so many requests for making a book, mm. the Daily Dose book. And our, our very talented writer, Elon Perchik, we were working on it. And we were like 90% done with it. And uh, the uniqueness of this book is we take the best Daily Doses, write it up into a very you know nice uh, written format. And you could take out your phone. And you could scan the QR code that's on the page. And it'll it's like take a barcode you, at the end of each chapter. And it'll mm-hmm. take you straight to that dose. Oh, that's really so you smart. So you read it, you could watch it, or you could dial into the hotline and listen to it. Either way, that's whatever so people smart. have. That's so smart. And we were so 90%. The 360 experience. Right, you know? very good, yeah. And we were like 90% done with that. And then tragically, our good friend, Rabbi Zachary Wallstein, yeah. itself, passed away. And we were just... I mean, we're still shocked to this day. It's hard. It's, like When we think about it, we're like, did that really happen? Like, you know, we were like... It's still we, digesting. We, he's still because, like standing up in front of a mic and screaming away and doing his thing, and uh, and he's not. 
And, and since after he passed away, you know, we found over a hundred lectures, which we never posted from the past. Unbelievable. Wow. And, and we had a defective hard drive from years and years ago that we, yeah. we covered. And wow. we saw over 100 lectures, and we're posting them every week now. Every every little, depending on the par show, wow. depending on whatever that's, it is. That's like, it's like crazy. gems. New content. Like, you're like, exactly. new content from my wallet. So we like put the Daily Dose stuff. book on hold. Right. We uh, we had a, a, a lot of written already stories of Robert Wallstein lectures, and we scrambled to put it all together. And uh, a lot of work was put into it, uh, a lot of details, a lot of heart and soul was put into it. And Baruch Hashem, B'Siyat Tishmaya, it's it's actually right here. Wow! Uh, it it just came out this week. Just came out. It's all about change, right. and we use the same format where after every uh, chapter, um, after every chapter, you scan the QR code, and I'll take you straight to that video version of what you just read. Is this your first official book? This is our first. Yeah, the Daily wow. Dose was supposed to be our first book, right. but, but this, we couldn't. Uh, we had to do this for for Rabbi Wallerstein. That's all. Um, and an amazing to- partner with us since 2007, actually, wow. which is when we started recording Ornava uh, right. and, and just all his different programs. So as you're watching this, uh, we printed around 10,000 of the first printing. Over uh, half of them already sold. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you're watching, go to feldheim.com um, or uh, check your local and, oh, Yeah. Also, if you want to sponsor 100 of these, you can do that as well for half the price. And, and inside the front cover, you get your own dedication. Beautiful. For those hundred, and mm-hmm. we give them out for you for free, or you can give them out yourself for free That's so to people. Nice. So uh, contact <coughs> us, Shimon at TorrentTime.com, if there's any interest in that. Yeah, after, you'll give me a link to everything. Right? <laughs> also, one right. thing very We're important, for those who don't have a smartphone or the internet, it actually also has phone numbers that you could dial in and listen mm, to, to the clip. To you dial in yeah. the extension. So we're going to continue Rory Wallstein's legacy because he was so close to Torrent Time. He's a huge fan of Torrent Time. Encourage everyone to, you know, to use it and to, to support it. Uh, but like I, when when there's a loss like Rabbi Wallerstein or you know any any Rav or Gadol that passes away, there's that you know feeling of loss. But you too probably feel it on a much higher level because you're like, this is someone who's giving us so much good. I mean, I'll call it content, but that's what it is. Content yeah. or Torah. Yeah, like, he was also our friend. Like we right. we spent a lot of <laughs> right. Shabbosim together, right. and we spoke a lot. Right. We had tremendous Sakharasatov to each other. Uh, so it was more than that. It was just not just someone else, you know. Right. Uh, because, like you just said, you know, exactly. It's it's hard. So, I, I got a lot of confused feelings over the past seven months because usually when somebody passes away, you don't see them. But I was w- working on the book so deeply and trying to get these clips and trying to, and that I would see him so often. And it's like, is he, did he actually, is he right. not with us anymore? Yeah. Well, that's, I guess that's one of the beautiful parts of, of Torah. You know, you have people today learning, you know, the Ramban or right. whatever, whatever, Rashi or whatever it is. And they feel so alive because exactly. they left us it's with their, their legacy. Torah. Right. And Rabbi Wallerstein, he's not here, but in so many ways, he's still, he is here. And right. Very well said. It's crazy that you found that that hard drive with. Yeah, it's, it's really I, crazy. Like it, it really, it really is. And you know, a, a big thank you also to Feldheim and to Arnava for helping us with this. Right. They're, yeah. they, were, they, they were totally all in to help make this happen. This was truly, truly sad to Dishma that wow. this book came out. Um, and now, so now we're going back to the Daily Dose book because okay. we have to finish that right, off right, because right. a lot of people are waiting for that as well. Right. right. So uh, a lot, a lot going on. And as if all that wasn't enough of everything we just said. Like my brother just mentioned a few minutes ago, we have a few projects that are we're, we're working on and called Rebbe Anytime. So we found out that there's every year there's around 35,000 fifth graders. Just fifth graders. Boys, just boys. Uh, and so many of them are, are like behind in their Gemara and the, the classes might be too large or the fathers maybe are not qualified to sit down and learn with them. Hold on, to clarify, what, what's, why fifth graders? Or are you saying oh, it's we're start, grade? No, we're starting, starting with fifth. With, okay. We're starting with it's fifth. It's not like fourth grade, sixth grade, they're fine. Yeah, we're starting with fifth. We're starting with fifth grade, got it. And we're gonna go to all the grades eventually, wow. but this is such a massive project, you gotta start somewhere. Right. And we wanna do it at such a high level that we're gonna start with one grade right now, which is a fifth grade. Eleven CS is what the majority of right. of uh, fifth graders are learning. Yes, bundles of flax. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I remember that. Okay. Um, so we're gonna get like some top top uh, rebbeim. We're gonna create a, plat- a platform because, like I was saying, so many fathers are not qualified to sit down and learn because maybe they're not holding themselves. Or they don't have time. Or they don't have time. They don't have money for a tutor, and the kids are struggling uh, keeping up with the class and everything and the yeshiva rebeams are great they might be amazing at giving it over but maybe because their cl- classes are so large maybe they, they don't have time to give the individual attention that each kid needs so this can be for those who the kids who are struggling 
you know, even kids who are not struggling, they just need a review. Let's say there's a test about to come up. They just want a chazer. So it's, it's, it's really, it's something for every yeshiva boy who just wants better clarity on what they're learning in yeshiva, even out. Right. So that's going to so, be Rebbe anytime. Right. And it's going to be through multiple platforms. Uh, even people who don't have any internet, you know, we want to put it on USB drives and send it over to them. Or of course, there'll be an app, there'll be a website, there'll be a hotline. Uh, and it's going to be a free service. We just want to help everyone we can. So that's uh, very, very excited about that project. Anybody out there listening who wants to, you know, help sponsor that project, please let us know. We're um, so happy that we're able to give opportunity for people to, to partner with us, <laughs> right. you know, because we have so many things that we're doing. And it's mamish like you go to a store and he's like, okay, so how do I want to change the world today? You <laughs> right. know, who do I want to partner with today? And Baruch Shem, through us, that's what we're offering. And it's mamish you're partnering with Hashem. You can't go wrong when doing that. Where do you see... I'll say tour anytime, but when I say tour anytime, I, I'm, I'm including Rebbe anytime and, and right. all the, the entire everything, everything. under tour anytime, right? So, like, where do you see it being in, or hope it being in 50 years from now? Wow, 50 years. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going far, but like, you got your big thing. I mean, we, we got a big bracha from many Rabbanim that we're going to be the ones live streaming Mashiach. No way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's awesome. That yeah, means that's we're going to awesome. have to know in advance so we can prepare the equipment. <laughs> so, well, you. Yeah, but we can't share it though. Yeah, so we can't know. share it though. Yeah, don't tell about it. So anyway, but uh, yeah, no, we we don't know. We go, we just go day by day. We just as long as Hashem gives us strength and and we dive in for that, just to keep going and the and the right team, um, we're just gonna keep going. We you know I just see what 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 ideas Hashem keeps putting in our head. You know we're, we're working on another platform called uh, Torah Anyone mm. because unfortunately over eighty percent of the Jews in the world are not really observant, not yet holding don't really know much about you know observing judaism we can't forget about them so we're creating a special platform called torah anyone it's for anyone at any level mm. because right now you take a person who doesn't even know what shemai israel is put them on torah time it could be counterproductive right right, right. It's, like it's, uh, it's a, you know, it could be way too advanced right. very overwhelming right. So, right. so this There's is going to be special curated content a completely different platform just for that you know situation uh, and you know, again, this is something we were working on. We want to do with other chef. You guys are successful. running out of problems to solve. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this, right. Unfortunately, there's always going to be what to what right. to do, and there's always going to be, like you said, problems or challenges that people are going to go through. That that we we try to be, you know, like for example, this Torah. Anyone, I'm sure there's many friends of people out there who are not, you know, on the derech who don't really have a good platform to send people to. Uh, should I send them to Torah anytime or not? What if he listens to the wrong thing? He can. He, so like we're, we're creating things for everyone. No, it's, a, it's so, such a great call. I have a friend, mm -hmm. he's, he's a gar, and I, he, like, it's not a surprise, but he pounds Torah anytime. Oh, yeah. And That's I great. think Torah anyone would be, again, he, he's, you know, he's um, observant for, for many years now, but like I could totally see him saying like something like Torah anyone is great because yes, he's, he's capable of listening to the share on Torah anytime, but there's a mm -hmm. lot of ABC or alf based basics that he's not not literally out of base, but I'm right. saying like the basic intro stuff that he probably never got educated on. Um, Yakov, can I hear a little secret? Yeah, sure. A, lo a lot of from people are also going to use Torah. <laughs> <Okay, that's fair. laughs> a little secret, right? Because a lot of the fundamentals sometimes are not taught, right? So you know, but don't worry, we won't tell nobody. Okay, fine. You're saying <laughs> anyone? It's it's really for everyone. It's really for anyone right. because uh, sometimes the foundations are also not taught in the system. So uh, so yeah. Right. Okay. Fine. So I, towards the end, I, I ask, um, I call them more fun questions. And Is this then, the end, or do we have any more anytime? Oh, and uh, yeah, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to like overload you. Oh, you still so have more? No, no, we're we're good. Okay. I mean, we, we have we a lot more, more, but we spoke. No, about I know we could go for like, four hours. <laughs> no, I mean, we, tell me we, about, I, I spoke um, about the website. Dancing anytime where you <laughs> bring in dancers. I mean, that's uh, not custom anytime. We actually have many, many domain names and many ideas, which are, we're not going to enter now. <laughs> but we spoke about the website, about the app, about the daily dose, about the hotline, about the newsletter. Uh, about convention recording, Chesed anytime, Rebbe anytime, Torah anyone. There's a lot going on. And uh, just want to take this opportunity to thank all our incredible users, uh, all our donors. You guys, you the donors are the ones giving lifeblood into this organization because everything is free, Baruch Hashem, uh, for the users. So thank you for that. Thank you to our speakers uh, and to our volunteers and our workers. Um, just, uh, just really, we just we thank Hashem every day that He put us in the situation. To, he picked us to be the messengers for all this, and we're truly, truly humbled. It's really, it's an amazing so, army. It's Mamish an army of Hashem, of, of getting many people involved, and and Baruch Hashem, there's an outlet for people to be a part of something, and we're and and, and we're blessed to be a part of people who are passionate, 
who are like-minded individuals who don't just do things because they have to, because they truly want to spread Torah, to hit people, to get them in their hearts, you know, and to have them do a 180. And it's, imagine this, you're bringing Hashem's children back. There's nothing better than that. There's nothing greater than that. You can have a father that has two kids. One is a tzaddik and the other is not. And, and, and the father is proud of the tzaddik, but when the tzaddik brings the, the rasha back, the father is on cloud nine. He's, right. he's even more happier. So being a part of this organization, whether it's volunteering or financially, your mom is bringing Hashem's kids back, and there's nothing greater than that. It's really beautiful. So typically, I ask people to end, if they could spend one hour with someone, who would they spend it with? So I'm going to shift the question for you two, and it's for both of you. If there's one person from history that Hashem says, you could have them on Torah anytime oh, to give goodness. share him, which person would you choose? There's no wrong answer. I mean, maybe if you say like Haman, that's probably not a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but you know what I mean. Wow. Okay. Um, so I, I always had a connection with the Chavetz Chaim. Ah, mm. I knew you were going to say I'm that. I'm sorry, yeah? Shimon. I'm sorry. I knew you were going to say that. I know. <laughs> <clears throat> always. Uh, like I, I don't know what it is. You know, maybe it's because <laughs> he's the epitome of rebuilding the Beit Hamikdash really? mm. and bringing Mashiach. Because that's he. He is the the antidote of why it was destroyed in the first place. So it's like Imamish, everyone just like learned from him. So I feel like to spread his Torah, which Baruch Shem we do, you know, we, we, we can have, you know, but imagine him and himself giving over the information. That's just mind blowing. I would. That's I, an amazing question, by the way. Okay. You know, like, it's just who, who in the past. So that, that's, that would be my answer. Okay. I'd that's... be glued to it, just listen, especially to the subtitles. So that daily dose from the Chavz <laughs> yeah, you know, like, woof. Got oh, just, thing. You got chills. Um, that's a tough question, but I would probably pick the Rambam. Yeah, yeah. Just to hear the halachot straight from from him, mm. you know, and uh, and to if he was on the platform, would it say like Rabbi Doctor or? <laughs> uh, that's saying, funny. It's like there's like acronym. That's probably what we, we just probably do the Rambam. What's What's the worst advice that either of you have received in your life? It's mm. a big question. And if you don't mm. like that question, we could do the reverse. What's the best advice? <clears throat> and if you like both of them, you could do both. Well, I guess I could start with the best advice. Okay. Um, um, I guess I'll just do the best advice. But sure. actually, I'd say one of the best advice I got actually from Shimon. Hmm. Yeah, which um, when I was in working in Turo College, that was like really the first main place that I ever worked. And this is actually how I do anything in life is uh, put yourself in a situation where you're you're the best at what you're doing. You're like the best in the room. Like translating it to put yourself in a situation where they need you more than you need them. Meaning you're so awesome. Mm. You're so amazing that if you want to like leave, like they'll just like, they're at your mercy or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And just, I, I would, I remember I would take that advice. I would make sure I would close out the most work orders every day. To make sure that I was always on top, you know, and I, and whatever I did and whatever we do, and I guess you could see it on on uh, why Hashem chose us, I don't know, but maybe the fact that whatever we do, we do it all the way. Mm. We're the best at it. We're, like we can't just be mediocre. So that's that's something that's uh, I have enormous uh, appreciation for. Uh, him, that's good him advice. Me. Always whatever you're doing, just be, be the, the best, best at, at it. it. Be yeah. the best at it. Whatever it is. If you're going to start something, don't just be mediocre. I could see you guys clipping that, making that a daily <laughs> That was very good. That's funny. Oh, sure. But uh, yeah, that's great. And what about you? What's what's just, the best um, or worst? I, I think I heard this from one of my good friends who uh, uh, Nissan Yakubov, uh, who passed away unfortunately from a sickness. Uh, he said, "Live a life um, how you would want people to say at, at your lavaya, you know, about you. Make sure you live that type of a life, mm. you know. So um, we try to be the best we can and just be best servants of Hashem as we can be and." And uh, be the best, uh, you know, parents and the best uh, spouses mm -hmm. and best uh, sons uh, and best people to everyone in the world. And just to spread, keep spreading the word. Uh, yeah, keep spreading the word and inspiring people. There's not much time left. You know, Mashiach is so close and there's so many people who are so far away. We just got to get as many people in as, mm -hmm. as possible before he gets here because once he's here, it's, uh, it's a complicated situation. Like, like so, Rabbi Pesach Kron said, you know, when you look at a tombstone, you have the year born, and then you have the year died, and then you have a dash. And he says, what did you do with that dash? Mm. You know what I mean? That's one of the, that's like, just really, what did you it's do with the dash? It's all about the dash. It's all about the dash. I like you know? 
And he's also a very close friend of ours. So. Yeah, but any, I'm, I don't know if it's every single one, but like this Dora class has brought you right. like. Yeah. You know, yeah. way, like, it was actually supposed to be a whole bunch of different speakers doing that. Oh, really? Yeah, but we, after we recorded him, we never got around to <laughs> anyone else. So it was, he's got it. He was so okay to it. Was to amazing. The, the if there's a good person, he's, he's perfect for it. He really is. Oh, he is. He is. He's, he's, so, he's so amazing. Um, so there's 613 mitzvahs. Is there one particular mitzvah that you gravitate towards more than the others? Uh, spreading Torah is that one of them? Or, uh, uh, spreading Torah, right? <laughs> um, I guess that equates all the mitzvahs. Um, but maybe because my week is so packed, and by the end of the week, I'm just so pleasantly exhausted, if that's even a term, because I was so happy with, again, being uh, trying to being uh, a, an amazing messenger of Hashem for that week on spreading Torah. I mamish Shabbos mm. is like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how I could explain it, but it's just, it's just, it, it's like, it's like I actually take Shabbos and I push it throughout my whole week. Like, mm. that's probably what gives me the energy. You know what I mean? And like on the way to shul and on the way back, like I'm walking with my son to, uh, to, to shul and I'm just like, it's just so like, you know, it reminds me actually of a <clears throat> dose. Not that he's not thinking of Torah in time. <laughs> <laughs> always. That doesn't stop. It's always. Right, right. right. You know, even uh, for example, with this whole Robert Wallstein book, like on Shabbos, like, what are you going to do? I was just, I kept going over the manuscript and I kept doing this. Whatever it is on Shabbos, that's why it's anytime. Because even on Shabbos, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I don't know, Shabbos, I'm very... Which dose this, is your Yeah, you're to say a dose. Uh, oh, the dose, uh, Rabbi uh, Ben Shushan. He was saying that when his father would uh, would come home and would go to shul, he would he would praise Shabbos so much and how it would be like, oh Shabbos, I'm so excited for Shabbos, and that was infused in the kids. And it's so important how the father acts, how the parent acts, and how much emphasis and how much oomph they put into any mitzvah. It just even subconsciously is going to get in. And look, he mentioned it in the dose, and it affected tens of thousands of people, you know, because of how the father just infused it. So um, that's very, very important to um, <clears throat> to infuse in the kids or anybody you go to, just talking about it, showing the the, the hashivas of it. So Shabbos is, is, is a big is a big thing for me. Very beautiful. Yeah. And you're sticking with uh, spraying Torah. <laughs> it's a good answer. <laughs> I'm obsessed and we're possessed with what we do. Um, it's our life. And I just wanted to also thank our families for allowing us to do this. Right. This sticks yeah. to be on, on them, yeah. our wives and our it. kids. And and they're all in. Our, our parents, Baruch Hashem, uh, they have a tremendous amount of uh, nachas from what we do. Uh, and uh, the best is yet to come. You know, we just, we just purchased a property. We had a big uh, fundraising campaign last year, December 26th. We raised a million dollars. We took that money and we purchased a property where we moved into as our office. We actually had- Where, where's your office? It's on Main Street on 69th Avenue. In Queens, New York. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, in Queens. We were working before in a tiny little basement, 11 people crammed in a room, oh we gosh. couldn't even breathe. Right. And we're like, instead of looking for a bigger place for rent, let's just, right. we always dreamed about having our own headquarters and building our studio. So that's still something we, we, we dreaming about and we want to do with Zeth Hashem. If anyone out there listening wants their name on the building, of uh, the Touring Time headquarters, worldwide headquarters and studios, please do reach out to us and <laughs> to see if you know you could join us for that. But yeah, the the space we have is definitely much bigger than what it, when it was. And this year alone, we we're able to hire, uh, you know, six uh, software developers and designers. A because of all these projects that we're working on, and B because now we have a place to put them. You know, and again, it's only because of people who are able to support us and be able to because it goes mama should go straight into building up Torah anytime into into all these amazing things and trying to reach the most amount of people possible. Really beautiful. I'm, I'm going to end off with this one question. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone listening? It could be that they're observant. It could be they're not observant. And they want to to be successful in mm -hmm. life. They want to make an impact mm -hmm. in the world. I, you know, I, I, I think I asked this type of question to a lot of people, but I think there's something very inspiring about two people that did not grow up observant and now the impact in the world, it's, it's unbelievable. So what advice would you give to someone who, who wants to make a change? Um, what, what I would say is that um, do something. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. Just be involved in some way. You know, it could be from just being the guy in charge of, you know, in the synagogue, setting up the chairs or some type of community event or just just be involved in some level and and give it give it meaning it's important you know just to have a life full of meaning and joy and happiness 
and um, and there's nothing, there's no greater feeling than giving. There's, there's nothing that compares to it. Uh, so get involved. You know, the, so many people have come, come up to us and says, "How could I be involved in Torian Time?" You know, whether it be graphics people or people just volunteering as camera people, or or anything. You know, so that's just my biggest piece of advice. Get involved with with people who are making things happen, and uh, make things happen together with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and people shouldn't be discouraged uh, by looking at our because st- there could be some people they get discouraged and say, "Oh man, I'm never going to open up an organization. Let me not, not, not start." But you know, Hashem, I mean, Hashem has the potential for each person. Rav Wallace, he always that's all he always mentioned the potential of people and how my potential is different than yours. And people aren't going to say, how come you weren't a Moshe Rabbeinu? You know, when, 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 when somebody passes away after 120, they're going to say, how come you weren't a, a Ruben Kolyakov mm-hmm. or a Shimon Kolyakov? You know, because I had high hopes for you, Hashem's going to say, you know. So a person should never say, oh, I could never reach that high. So let me just not do anything. You know what I'm saying? So you reach for the stars, right? And you hit the moon. Hitting the moon is a big deal. You know what I'm saying? And um, so to kind of to just piggyback on what Shimon said, and, and the change that you are going to make, it, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be astronomical, because at the end of the day, it actually might be astronomical. You just might not see it. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like these stories of people saying, "Hey, you want to come to a shear?" or just calling somebody up, you know, in the middle of and saying, "Hey, how's it going? How are you doing?" And then that just that call because somebody actually cared about me. All of a sudden, I decided not to do this or not to do that or just crazy stories of nothing. It's a great example. The guy who pulled me in from the street and said, you want some free pizza? And there's a speaker. What's the chut did he get? Wow. Look, what, look what ended up happening. Right. Wow. All he did is just say, hey, are you Jewish? Come in. We're giving away free pizza. I mean, even the guy who made the pizza, that's uh, there. Yeah, there we know, go. Like everyone, it's... Yeah, it's all about how you think. That's it, funny. Right. You know? it's very good. Very good. I like how you said that. Wow. Everyone's involved. There's always something to do. Everyone's We have involved. to keep going. We can't be lazy. You know, life is short. There's so much to do. So much going on. And we're part of such an incredible nation, and we are an example to the world, you know. And that just reminds me: a lot of people who are not even Jewish will listen to Torian Time as well. By the way, <laughs> because I mean, the, the living the kind, we have a lot of non-Jews. It's you're great. No, it's, it's, it's all good. It's good stuff. We have a lot of converts people. too over the years. Dozens and dozens of converts who said it all started with I accidentally bumped into a Torah class on Torah anytime. Wow. I'm like, okay. <laughs> wow. Really? Because it's it's not only about spreading Torah, which which obviously is the Iker, but also Torah values. It's just going to make the world a better place. Right. It's, it's humanity. Right. It's just the right way to live, the right way to act, the right way to speak to somebody, how to socialize, derech eretz. It's really, it's, it's all stemming from there. Mm-hmm. You know, so if, if they're learning from it and they're, and, you know, they're becoming more friendly with each other, more friendly with us and Yidin or whatever it is, that's amazing. Right. You know, it helps, it helps the world. Really beautiful. Okay, so Mr. Okay. Shimon, Mr. Ru- Ruben. Ruben. You, you don't say it with a V? Uh, no, I, I, I go more go, with Ruben. He goes by Ruben. I mean, Ruben. obviously his Hebrew name is Ruben Chaim. Right, but, right. But uh, he goes by, he goes by Shimo, Ruben. Mr. Shimon, Mr. Yeah. Ruben, thank you very much for coming oh, Sham. Uh, Thank you, Yaakov. Much success to you and everything you. that you're doing. Thank and, you. and thank you for giving this opportunity. Oh, man, thank it's you. been great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Go ahead and go buy the the books, Secrets of the Soul, and and the the Sichus book, and and just get ready for 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 the next book coming out. Um, really great. In the show links, you'll you'll be able to go to the website to purchase them. I, I highly highly recommend it. And go ahead and listen to our friend at Joma, their podcast. It's it's. I had a few people come over to me, and you know. It's very often that people tell me about the uh, guests or episodes I've done, but um, it's always a breath of fresh air when people are like, hey, by the way, thank you for introducing that podcast to me. I really enjoy it. It's really helped me. It's It, it means the world to me. Go ahead and rate us five stars on Spotify or an Apple. If you don't know how to do it, send me an email. I'll teach you how. It's very simple, but I'll teach you how. I'm happy to. Uh, go ahead and share this episode with someone who, who you think will gain from and say like, wow, holy cow, it's so amazing how these two brothers you never would have suspected that they'll they built this giant empire that's changing the world and send it to someone that you're like i think you could change the world you could do it here look they did it they're proof so go ahead and and send it to that person in your life keep on being inspirational living l'chaim